Welcome to the lesson on post-cardiac arrest care. In this video, we'll discuss what to do after cardiac arrest care. If an individual has a return of spontaneous circulation, or ROSC, start post-cardiac arrest care immediately. The initial BLS and ACLS processes are meant to save an individual's life, while post-cardiac arrest care is meant to optimize ventilation and circulation, preserve heart and brain tissue and function, and maintain recommended blood glucose levels. Consider blood pressure support in any individual with systolic blood pressure less than 90 millimeters of mercury or mean arterial pressure or MAP less than 65. Unless contraindicated, one to two liters of IV saline or lactated ringers is the first intervention. When blood pressure is very low, consider vasopressors, commonly referred to as pressors. Epinephrine is the presser of choice for individuals who are not in cardiac arrest. Dopamine, phenylephrine, and metoxamine are alternatives to epinephrine. Norepinephrine is generally reserved for severe hypotension or as a last-line agent. Titrate the infusion rate to maintain the desired blood pressure. Hypothermia is the only documented intervention that improves and or enhances brain recovery after cardiac arrest. It can be performed in an unresponsive individual, that is, comatose, and should be continued for at least 24 hours. The goal of induced hypothermia is to maintain a core body temperature between 89.6 to 93.2 degrees Fahrenheit, that is, 32 to 36 degrees Celsius. Device manufacturers have developed several innovative technologies that improve the ability to affect and manage hypothermia in the post-arrest individual. Hypothermia should be induced and monitored by trained professionals. Induced hypothermia should not affect the decision to perform percutaneous coronary intervention, or PCI, because concurrent PCI and hypothermia are reported to be feasible and safe. For adult immediate post-cardiac arrest care algorithm, please refer to figure 30 in your corresponding ACLS manual. This concludes our lesson on post-cardiac arrest care. Next, we'll review symptomatic bradycardia.